Hello and welcome to RTC TV. I'm your host, Abby Malko, and here with me today are members from the Retired Teachers Association. Thank you for joining us today. And for a start, we will have them all introduce themselves and give a little background. Uh, I'm Jerry Good. Uh, I'll be the president uh, for next year of our great group. Uh, we have a very industrious group, high energy. We have lots of fun and many things going on with the Fulton County Retired Teachers. Uh, I began my teaching career in Tippecanoe Valley, uh, second grade, moved very quickly to middle school and taught there for 11 years, then moving to Rochester, uh, teaching fifth grade for about 10 years, and then my final stint uh, for my 30-year teaching career was with Mrs. Downs as my principal uh, over at Columbia School, teaching all day kindergarten, and it rocked. <laughs> I'm Kay Horn, and I started teaching way back in 1955, and I started as teacher for physical education for K through 8, and I traveled between three schools. Uh, I even went out to Ryder School before it consolidated and came into mm -hmm. Rochester schools. Uh, I taught uh, K through 8 until 1970, and then I went into the middle school, and I taught middle school until I retired in 2001. and. Uh, I love middle school. People think I'm crazy, but I love middle school. Um, I retired in, in 2001 and became involved with the retired teachers just almost immediately, although I didn't realize that there were two groups of retired <coughs> teachers statewide, and so I got into both groups. And as it turned out, I've uh, affiliated myself with our Indiana Teachers Retired Group, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, it's uh, for, I think 41 years is a long time of teaching and uh, it's been a good good time I think and uh, I've enjoyed my colleagues here and uh, all the students that I get to see up at Uptown once in a while and I said you were my phys ed teacher. <laughs> in fact I saw one last night at a choir concert so was, I didn't recognize him but he recognized oh, me so that's good. That's great. Hi I'm Cheryl Downs and I have taught with Rochester Community Schools uh, my entire career. I taught first grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade and then was principal at Columbia Elementary and uh, uh, I have lots of stories about lots of community people, but some of them I can't always tell. So. <laughs> that's, a, that's a later show. Yeah, that's a later <laughs> show. But I uh, enjoyed all my years and uh, just listened to the Manitas from the high school uh, at noon, and uh, they just did a wonderful job. So we celebrate Rochester Community Schools. Yes. My name's Eileen Howard, and uh, I started my teaching career back in 1964 in the little town of Fulton and after that uh, taught a couple of years in New Mexico because actually that's where I came from and went to school out there and married a fellow who was a Hoosier and we ended up back here and uh, after that I came back and taught one year at Culver in the middle school and I did try one year teaching high school in New Mexico and that didn't work out because at 23 and a mother of two children I assumed high school seniors were as mature as I was and that was a big mistake <laughs> and uh, I did have some students that were 19 and 20 and that just didn't work out. So back to the middle school, I came into Rochester in 1968. I taught until uh, 2002, and I just loved my career. Like Kay, I loved middle school students, and uh, people always say anyone that can teach middle school students is uh, uh, maybe crazy or uh, <laughs> something, but it works, and uh, I wouldn't trade middle school students for elementary or for the high school after that experience, that's for sure. And uh, uh, let's see, um, I loved my career. I did not join uh, retired teachers right away because uh, I had to quit teaching early because of uh, a back surgery and um, I wasn't able to get out and about for quite a while. So then once I joined, I became uh, pretty active, became president for a while. I also have joined the Indiana Retired Teachers Association and I'm pretty active with them. I'm on a couple of committees and I represent our local group by going to various 
area and district meetings. Um, I take care of several business matters and do some other things with regard to the state. So well, I represent great. us there. That's great. Thank you. I forget which one of you, but one of you is going to tell the viewers about the Retired Teachers Association and just everything it entails. So, You or me? Well, <laughs> uh, our Retired Teachers Association locally does a lot of things for the community. We volunteer. We uh, do services for people that need help or want help. Many of our individuals are associated with other groups. Several of our people are involved with Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. Some of our teachers are involved with building the ramps that go for some of the houses where people have need for mm -hmm. access. Some of our people read to the elementary students. Some of our teachers are involved Involved with this WAVE program mm -hmm. and they have gone to Akron and to Mintone to start testing students to okay. use that particular program. Uh, some of our individuals are involved with the free meals at the Methodist Church, mm -hmm. although they are in other churches as well, but okay. they come and do that. Uh, they're involved with the senior program and they do work there. Some of them knit or crochet clothing or the little blankets and yes. things for the infants. Some of us are involved with Gentiva Hospice. Some of okay. us are belonging to the Friends of the Library, so we help that group. Okay. Um, so many, what other many groups? I don't remember. Literacy Coalition. Oh, yes, Literacy Coalition. <clears throat> Excuse me, some of us are involved with that. Mm -hmm. So you name just about any group that does something like the Lions, Rotary, or whatever, our teachers are involved with that and doing those volunteer services. That's great. So a lot with the community and the <clears throat> Retired Teachers Association helping the current teachers and things like that, especially because you're wiser and you've been there and done that, right? Well, <laughs> we, we think. We think. <laughs> oh, okay. Either way. Yes. And even though you listed a bunch of projects that you are with the community, is there anything specific to retired teachers, a project that you've done recently or a really big project that was a big hit that you'd like to share with us? One of the things that I did, I met with one of the two men that currently own a company called O Post Road Oils. Mm -hmm. And he was here during the Round Barn Festival selling his uh, body products, which are soaps mostly. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I talked to him, I said, this would make an excellent money project for my helping hands up project. One of the things yes. the Indiana State Retired Teachers are doing is to provide money for the retired teachers who are in need of financial help, whether it be for rent, clothing, medical, hospitalization, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so he made an offer to me that I could buy products from him at a reduced cost but I would have to sell them at their price. They don't have stores or anything. Okay. And so I was selling those products and I was able to generate some money to give to the Hand Up Project. And at this point, uh, three or four, 1,000 or 1,200 dollar awards have been made to teachers that needed that money. Oh, that's great. And last year, Kay and I did some projects, and she made a quilt and some pillows, which we auctioned off at one of our retired teachers' meetings, and that money also went to the Hand Up project. So as a whole, the Indiana Retired Teachers Association also does several projects that they help by providing scholarships to students and we help pay into that scholarship fund. So all the Indiana retired teachers groups throughout the state contribute to that okay. to give scholarships to students in high school who want to become teachers mm -hmm. and then to help the teachers that need help. They're going to introduce that phase next year to provide money for a teacher who wants to institute a program but doesn't have sufficient money on right. their own to do that. So that will be the third phase. Okay, that's great. That sounds awesome. And you just talked about the different districts in Indiana. Could you explain the Retired Teachers Association of Indiana and then how it goes to different counties as well and how everyone interacts? 
Indiana has several districts that uh, we're in District 3, okay. <clears throat> which includes uh, the counties around us, Kosciuszko, Marshall, and so on. I don't have a map to show you, but uh, all the counties are divided up. Okay. Each county has a district director, and each ha county has uh, or district and then has their own meeting groups. And uh, once uh, in the spring, we all converge, converge down on Indy and uh, have our representative assembly. Okay. And uh, officers for the new state officers will be elected at that time. And uh, we have a CEO, Nancy Tolson is our most recent CEO, mm -hmm. and she will, will retire at the end of this month. So uh, we'll be getting a new uh, director uh, in January. We don't know who yet because they're still interviewing people. But uh, I believe there are eight districts mm -hmm. in, uh, throughout the county or throughout the state, and um, each district then will give a scholarship winner awarded uh, through the funds that we generate as we uh, take up collections and what have you. Okay, and is within your districts, do you normally stay with Fulton County and then when you converge in the spring, is that the only time you meet or are there ever surrounding counties that you get together and do projects with? Pretty much the spring uh, meeting is when we mostly all get together. Uh, we usually stay within Fulton County, mm -hmm. uh, try to bring in Culver, try to bring in uh, Tippecanoe Valley, try to bring in North Miami and uh, different teachers in those areas. Okay. Caston, of course, and yes. Rochester. And these are just a few of the board members, as I understand, and there's uh, quite a few of you, actually. Mm -hmm. Could you discuss each of your positions and the tasks that you're involved with? Maybe start at that end again. <laughs> okay. Um, it's it's a team effort, uh, as you can see, mm -hmm. and this is just part of the spokes of the wheel. But uh, my main priority is to uh, conduct the meetings, uh, have an agenda each time, uh, make sure everybody's notified, although we do now have people that are specialists in that area that will go ahead and be our media contact. And for instance, like, well, I won't say, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I was going to start telling what you did, but I don't no. want to say that. I mean, you have to tell that. Right. But anyway, okay. uh, so I go ahead and uh, mainly like the local meetings especially because then I get assistance. I try to go to the state, but if I can't go, um, well, Eileen goes no matter what mm -hmm. because she's uh, diehard and she's there ready to go each right. time. So that's very great. And I try to go when I can, and I've been lucky to be able to go most of the time, but sometimes for unknown reasons I can't. Right. But uh, anyway, uh, it's. It, I, I wanted to also let you know too that in addition to the corporations around us that are touching our county that we invite those teachers, there's also teachers that are retired from maybe Kokomo and Peru and places like that that are welcome to come. Mm -hmm. Any teacher or administrator that's retired from any place mm -hmm. else that happens to live in this county, we would embrace the opportunity to have them join our great group. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm a secretary and treasurer, of course. I, that means I um, take the minutes of the meetings and uh, get them in the newspaper and the shopper's guide. And um, then I also handle the money and take the dues. We Our dues are, we used to have $10 dues, but because of operating expenses, we decided that we should raise the dues. So next year, they will be $15 a year. And uh, that goes more, mostly to our operating expenses mm -hmm. and uh, if we have any speakers or uh, anything like that. Uh, uh, try to keep them a good accounting of the minutes and uh, keep a record of that. Our group was established way back in the early 50s by um, Charlene Safford Bailey. And she thought that the teachers who were retiring should have a say. And so she was the one who kind of got us going and mm -hmm. then got us uh, affiliated with the state organization. So uh, that was way back in the 50s. So. The, the late history. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm the uh, volunteer chairperson, and I collect all of the, the hours for our, I think we have 54 members. And so I'm collecting those hours and keeping track of what it is that they have uh, done uh, as far as their volunteer work. It's not a requirement, but it certainly is a plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the state allows us to kind of prorate our services to the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they give us a raid. And uh, I uh, 
have a rate of $22.14 per hour. So we've totaled up close to 2,500 uh, hours uh, of volunteer work, and I think about 60% of our teachers are involved uh, in volunteer uh, work. And so if you take the 2214 times our 2,500 hours, or 7,500 hours, it comes out to about uh, $161,223 worth of free services right. that our retired teachers are serving through uh, uh, retired teachers to our community. That's an incredible number. That's greatly appreciated and very, very cool. I, until you sit down and really do the numbers, you don't realize how much it's really helping everyone. So exactly. that's great. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Thank you. We, uh, we're pretty proud of that, and so every year we, we make up a little check mm -hmm. uh, and we present it to the mayor, and uh, then he hangs it on the wall in his office. So if anybody wants to know if retired teachers are really retired or not, <laughs> they can go in there and see how busy we are. Yes. And so that, that's one of our joys. And then the state all together will compile those hours and put out in a bulletin the total number of hours and the many thousands of dollars worth of work that wow. the retired teachers do for the state. Yes. We have another office position. We have a vice president who can take over when our president isn't able to do that. And then uh, Kay, as secretary, puts into the newspaper, I'm sure you've seen the many articles, yes. the wonderful ones that she writes and yes. gets in there. And every year she gets an award from Indiana Retired Teachers because of her wonderful publications. That's and she great. gets a recognition for that and uh, some sort of an award for that. And, website. and the website that she has, which uh, she will later give you that address and people can look at that and so she gets awards for that and then we have a person who looks up and finds places for us to have our meetings and it's generally a lunch meeting and they get that information back and then we have someone who will call people who don't get the paper that don't have email mm -hmm. or any media yeah. so that they can always be attuned to when we're going to meet and then I generally send out the email announcing the time and place and date and all of this gets reported back to our president and okay. then we have all kinds of people that help with stuff like that mm -hmm. finding places to eat what we're going to eat get the menu get the price yes. so it's a whole bunch of people involved so that the president doesn't have to do everything someone else Very looks nice. up and finds what program we're going to have okay. who's the presenter going to be and they report all that back so we have about four meetings a year okay. in general and uh, like she said we invite people from other areas mm -hmm. like Plymouth is very close to us. Mm -hmm. Argus is close. Most of those people go to Plymouth, but some of them still come to see us and That's great. join us. Very great. You have today two clock winners, which means that two of us have uh, accumulated enough points or volunteer hours that the state has awarded us uh, a clock award. The mm -hmm. Blue Cross Blue Shield has uh, given out mm -hmm. clock awards for I don't know how many years. I won it in 19 or in 2009, and you won it in 2011. I, I yes. leaned in. Congratulations! And that to means both of you. that we, for our district, had the most volunteer hours. That's great. And uh, whatever projects that we were working on at the time were instrumental in getting us those hours. I think so. That's great. And after hearing the numbers, I guess I never would have imagined all the volunteer things that you do. And saying they retired is really not true if you think about all the stuff oh, that you yeah. actually do. No. Mm -hmm. So that's great. <laughs> and do you enjoy, is this, obviously you're glad, you know, you say it's a great group. Do you often wonder what you would do if you were in this association and kind of, you know, just tell me about your experience with the association, I guess, and how much it's helped you because we know how much it's helped Fulton County. I, I think that uh, getting together with the other retired teachers, you get to discuss uh, the current happenings in education. You can stay abreast mm -hmm. of what's going on in the legislature and um, how much the retired teachers need to possibly step in and assist yeah. in any political way that we can to keep education funded, uh, help the, the children of every community. Um, so I, I think it's important that we stay up and stay aware and 
I agree. And uh, we, we do have political speakers come to us and talk about um, some of the possible legislature uh, issues coming up, and we can have a thought on those. That's great. And after hearing, obviously, teaching was a passion and how much you guys loved it while you were teaching, it's, it's something that you're not really just going to be done with once you retire. So that's great that there is an association that you can help the teachers that are currently teaching and everybody else around the county. So that's really mm -hmm. great. And I was going to mention, too, we're yeah. all lifelong learners, and this gives us a chance to delve into new areas with our speakers and our legislatures and things. But one thing that I cherish, too, is just getting together with my friends, mm -hmm. yes. getting to see them, catch up with what's going on with the grandkids, or things that, if they're volunteering at a school, things like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of fun and very gratifying. That's great. Those are all the questions I have for you. Is there anything else that anyone would like to add? Well, you know, something I'd like to piggyback on what Kay said about meeting a former student. And and I, uh, when my grandson comes, he lives in South Carolina, we'll be walking around town and I'll introduce him to people and, and uh, they'll say, oh, uh, your grandmother taught me or your mom taught your, you know, that it'll go on and on like that and yes. we'll go home and he'll say, did you teach everybody in town? Oh. <laughs> and say, well, you know, after 34 years right here, plus casting and Culver, just about, you know. And uh, so that's always fun. And, that's great. And we enjoy that. And uh, I met a student the other day coming out of Big R. I hadn't seen him forever. And he said, aren't you Mrs. Howard? And I said, yeah. And he said, you taught at Fulton. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, you probably don't recognize me, but you taught me down there in 1964. And uh, I says, oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm surprised you recognize me. Uh, it's been 50 years after all. <laughs> and he said, well, you have aged. Oh, and I said, no. okay. <laughs> that, oh, that's you. a funny story. Yes. But, well, 50 years, I said, that'll do it to you. But I didn't recognize him either, you know. He aged too, though. He yeah. aged too. <laughs> Does anyone, I didn't prepare you on this question before, but I'm sure that you have many memories from being a teacher. Anyone have any story, their favorite story, of being a teacher <laughs> that pops in their head? I know there's probably many stories to sift through. So you can't tell. tell. That's true. <laughs> the most appropriate story. The most have. appropriate. Uh, yeah. Um. Any blizzards you were shut in? And oh, 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 oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> I don't remember the year, but I think <laughs> 78, 77 or 78. 78. Remember the year we had to spend the night with the students at 78, schools 78, uh, 78. overnight because we couldn't, uh, parents couldn't get in to yes. get them. And so uh, we each, uh, and I know the elementary, we were staying with the children and the kids thought it was wonderful. Oh, I bet. We played all night. We raided the kitchen. We fed them. We <laughs> Class pop popcorn. Sleepover. Oh, it was. <laughs> and, uh, of course, we weren't prepared, so children had to sleep on whatever we could find. And, oh, no. And uh, some of the close, people close to the elementary schools brought in blankets and sleeping bags. Um, but uh, the, the irony is the next morning when parents could get in to get their parents, the kids are going, no, no, we want to stay. <laughs> I don't want to go back home. This was too much fun. Oh, yeah. no. So, uh, yeah, that was... That, that sounds that like was, quite an experience. Yeah. Well, I taught science, and one day um, Mrs. Matthews showed me a note that a parent wrote and said that her son couldn't come to school because he had a science headache, and she meant sinus. Oh, no. <laughs> So as a science teacher, you're a little scared yeah, that. The science head. I knew what you meant, though. But <laughs> That's weird. We have a lot of cute stories we could tell. Sure. If only we could say it well, on TV, but yes. we can't. No, I <laughs> imagine. No. With my parents <laughs> both being teachers, I've seen and graded some spelling tests where some letters were switched around, uh -huh. not the words that were intended, so I can only imagine <laughs> all the stories you have. So if no one has anything else to add. Just the, the only thing I might add is okay. that if uh, those of you watching uh, in the community have a need for uh, computer science or building skills, um, grant writing, um, oh my, uh, just just about anything, uh, the retired teachers are a wonderful resource. Um, Absolutely. There are people that have uh, wonderful skills that aren't always tapped and contact us, tell us what you need. Yeah, absolutely, especially with all the volunteer hours, I'm sure you have a lot of ability to help, so that's great. 
Thank you for being here and thank you for everything you've done along with teaching and just being in the association mm -hmm. volunteering. The community greatly appreciates it. Thank you for coming in to chat with me. It was a great chat today, ladies. Thank and you. thank you all for viewing. We will catch you next time on RTC TV.